Good evening and welcome to ATV News. My name is Shella Malawson. Coming up on today's bulletin, there's hope for entrepreneurs despite tough times for businesses in Bulawayo. A new website has been set up for Christian women. Photojournalists have met to discuss issues they faced in their careers. And in sport, there are hopes that a boxing tournament will reignite fans' enthusiasm. Two business women are providing a shining example of how some entrepreneurs are pressing ahead despite the deindustrialization of the city of Bulawayo. Our reporter Melody Mokutu reports from the Kelvin Industrial Workshop. While many people are crying over the closure of companies in Bulawayo, since when Gwenye and Farah and Lovo are seeing the bigger picture, seizing the opportunities that come with it. The two women are occupying part of Bulawayo's closed Kelvin industry workshops where they are enjoying roaring business by making furniture and shoes. ATV visited the two women who shared their business experiences and insights. Yeah, I'm going to choose a industry as a career because I'm interested in leather. I'm going to choose a leather. Since his relatives were skeptical about her work, but she persevered and never looked back. I'm going to choose a leather. 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 Meanwhile, Farah and Lovo, who shares the same factory with Senzwe, is also doing wonders by manufacturing leather shoes. Just like most other small to medium scale businesses, Sanzu and Farai often lack financial capital to expand their businesses. Reporting for ATV in Wulawayo, Zimbabwe. Women from different Christian denominations have launched their own website to share experiences and talk about issues affecting them. Muchana Dachimuka reports. <laughs> Chikwata chemadzimai anotunga mirira makere kakasiya na munyika. Chaka paroda ni mtande runodai kwa kuti today's women. Runovari chafa mbisa mashoku mwenye ya zinobata madzimai. It's a website for today's women conference, which is a conference uh, that is uh, being spearheaded by Prophetess Yuna Kuti. Now this conference is a website called www.todayswomanconference.org. The website will enable people from all over the world, even from Zimbabwe, to be able to log in onto the website, find out information about the conference, how they can get involved, how, can, how they can book their hotel, how, what is happening with the build-up to the conference, who the speakers are. Mango Mazimai Anu Tawaranesho Kukosha Kweo Dande Mutande Iri. You know, this is a Kuti Mazimai, Akadesho Kanaka Mbamake. Kuye mudzimai awe ano shanda ne maoko ake asinga mirire kupiwa asinga mirire kushanisa muiri wake asi awe mudzimai ano shanda ne maoko ake achiriritira muri yake vamwe vanotaura nezve zvino zvichange zvichidzidziswa muda nemutande iri challenges poverty uh, relationships unemployment sickness um, lack of knowledge concerning uh, the law, what are the rights of a woman, all those things. Because I 
Mudzimai ari kupika makore makume maviri mujeri ekuponda anopawa nhorondo yake. Takatongwa 22 years mujeri kudarere high court. Asi shandinofarira ndicho kuti mufaro wandi nawo ndewa Jesu. Ndicho kuti panda katongwa ipapo andinokwanisa kuzvigamuchira. Asi ko zvino ndinonyatsonzwa kuti ari kurarama mandiri mandiri ndi Jesu. Handisi ndiri kurarama. Kana ruzuwa rokadai rukaramba ruchivandu zwa rujaderedza kuparwa kwe moswa zvikuru kuvanhu vechidzimai ndini mtorwe na we ATV ndiri muHarare Zimbabwe. Photojournalists in Africa are constantly struggling to get recognized for their work. Roberta Fumane reports from a meeting at the National Gallery of Zimbabwe where such issues were being discussed. African photojournalists are still facing many hurdles when carrying out their assignments affecting their chances to build an international reputation for themselves and their work. Photographers participating at an exhibition at the National Gallery of Zimbabwe discussed various issues ranging from law fees paid for publication of their images, non-recognition, discrimination and lack of resources. Angela Jim, a freelance photographer, said it is not easy to be a female photographer in a field dominated by men. It's a challenge, I must say, especially if a petite woman like myself, you get uh, harassed here and there. People take advantage because you're a woman. A prominent photojournalist working for a daily paper said photojournalists are working under difficult conditions with limited opportunities to earn more and to do some projects. It is relatively different. I, mean, I think it takes a lot of... Uh, um, you, you have to be at a particular level. Uh, it's, it's very difficult to sustain yourself as an art photographer. You, you don't get that much work. It's not as regular as day-to-day uh, -day photojournalism, press photography. You know, there's always something. There's always a demand for that. <coughs> so, I mean, in as much as I would want to divert to the world of art photography, uh, you know, there, there are a lot of concerns that I have, you know, sustainability. You know, you have to be a brand name. The creator of Guanza Mando Photography said most international organizations now want pictures that are not stereotyping but perceive the African continent in a light way. The world is always looking for something new. Like, the art world is always looking for something new. They don't want to see the same kind of images. That's why I think there's interest in art from China, art from Africa, because they have never been exposed to uh, art coming from these different places because it's different. So I, I feel that uh, there, there is a interest and also there is a market for it. Through the exhibition, a gallery curator said his organization exposed photographers to overcome challenges they are facing. Well, I would say um, to help some of the challenges of photographers, basically it's exhibitions, it's these forums like Harare Conversations where we talk about these challenges, then we can find a way forward. The conversation was held under the theme Turning Challenges into Opportunities, discussions on how African photographers can make a more significant impact in and outside Africa. Reporting for ATV, Robert Avmane, Harare, Zimbabwe. A boxing tournament between Zimbabwe and Namibia has shown signs of reigniting interest in a sport that has dropped in popularity in recent years. Robert Tafumane reports. Entertainment starved boxing lovers were in for a treat recently after a local promoter organized a boxing tournament which you see locals battling out with Namibians. Local boxing promoter said he has taken it upon himself to expose the local boxers to international exposure. As you know that um, Zimbabwe has been, Zimbabwean boxers have been starved of uh, quite a number of uh, tournaments. So the only way we can keep them busy is to take them outside the country in countries like South Africa, countries like Namibia, in countries like uh, Zambia and, and in Malawi. So Namibia has been uh, one of our, our, our good playing fields where most of our boxers go there to turn professional and even for some international bouts. Donga said that local boxers were now in camp and their preparations were progressing well. This bout in particular will be held on the 14th of September 
and we are taking four of our of our boxers there um three of them they come from the second capital city which is blueo and one of them comes from 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 uh, from harare the guy from harare is nicolam tonora uh you'll be fighting his second international bout um in the welterweight division and the um, three other boxers coming from blueo and tando Swana will be fighting uh, his second professional fight in the flyweight division he's a very hot uh, prospect and he's very young at uh, only 21 and having done well in his first professional fight we hope that he's gonna um, do well for himself and for the nation he also said poor corporate support and wrangling in the mother body for boxing was affecting the sport a lot of um corporates have been complaining about our you know our board saying that your board is not doing anything they, they your board um, uh, the zimbabwe boxing board of control does not have an office um you know they don't keep records so how do we come in to support a sport which is not run uh, in a proper manner. Nicola Mutoneri is confident he will clinch the flyweight title. Uh, my training so far is very good. I don't have any problems in my training. I'm training three times a day and I'm looking forward for a knockout in Namibia. It's my second fight in a professional career and uh, I look for a knockout in Namibia. The sport has been going down over the last three decades and so far no boxer has taken boxing to the level of the late Africa heavyweight boxing champion proud Kilimanjaro Chinembiri and Zimbabwe's heavyweight champion Arigoma Chipondo. Kilimanjaro, as he was affectionately known by his legion of fans, turned himself into a fierce fighting machine and made Zimbabwe proud by winning the African heavyweight championship. Reporting for ATV in Harare, Zimbabwe. Thank you for joining us. Good night.